Hey, wonderful people, join me on a journey of discovery to find out what really is ground or earth. Hey, and welcome back. This will be a bit of a different film. I'm not going to illustrate it. It's just going to be me talking. And you might be interested to join along with my mindset, my journey into discovering what is the ground or the earth of an electrical system and why what we've been told is all wrong. So to discover what ground or earth, and I think I'm just going to call it earth. So if you call it ground, it's earth. Maybe because I'm British and we call it earth, but it's ground. It's the same stuff. But first of all, I discovered that there's three different terms called earth, and they're all completely work in a different way. The first one you all know about, and so did I, and that's in your car. So a car has a common earth or a common ground it's the chassis and that means that car manufacturers can have a single wire going from the battery to your horn and then your horn is then connected to your chassis and that goes back whoa and eventually back into the negative usually ground or negative terminal of your battery and then the same with the headlights and the windscreen wipers so you only need one wire to go to something and it has a common ground that's got nothing to do with the earth that's just a way of saving money for car manufacturers and it's smart good side point here is if your horn fails to work or your lights don't come on we all check the wire going from the battery to the lights but you don't often check the ground from the lights to the chassis and the continuity of that return path all the way back and by a ground strap up to the usually negative post of the battery. So checking the whole circuit, checking the ground continuity, the common ground is really important. But that's got nothing to do with why electrical systems are grounded or earthed. Earthed, I'm sticking with earth. And that's also not the full picture. Let me explain how your washing machine works. So lots of power goes into your washing machine and if it ever goes wrong, if you touch the metal case of your washing machine, you would die because the power, the electricity would leap out of the metal into your fingers, down through your body, stop your heart and exit your toes into the earth. So how does your washing machine keep you safe? Well, again, it's got nothing really to do with the earth. It's got to do with safety, but we call it grounding. And this is how it works. If your washing machine ever fails and electricity touches the case due to a short or some kind of problem inside your machine, instead of going through you, it goes to a wire which goes back to the neutral bus bar in your consumer unit or your fuse box and then that goes back down through neutral so the electricity will find the shortest and easiest path using this green and yellow earth wire and it's very quick often these days you have an earth voltage sensor breaker at your fuse box that will detect if there is ever electricity on the earth wire it will trip fast enough that you faster than you would get an electric shock supposedly i've never tested it but you'll find those on things that often work in damp or wet environments like bathrooms or outdoors and this is very revealing about the safety of my house have you ever touched anything like your hi-fi or maybe your washing machine or your toaster and you get a tingle from it 
you know, it feels like it's got electricity on the case, but you don't get electric shock. It just feels a little tingly. That's because it has failed. And what's happening is that the electricity is going through the case. And instead of going through you and into the ground and killing you, it's finding the easier path and it's going through the ground wire back to neutral on your bus bar and then back to the power station. So that's the easiest route for it. But because there's so much power going through it, when you touch it, you feel a little tingle because some of it will go, oh, maybe I'll go through Simon's fingers. Oh no, it's too hard. I'll go through the green and yellow wire. So tingly equipment is a demonstration that something has failed and you need to get it fixed. So common ground in the car saves wires and it's just a common ground and it's not connected to the ground. It's just common rail. Safety in electrical equipment is a way of sending the electricity back to the neutral bus bar of your breaker box before it goes through you and kills you. That's also nothing to do with the ground. Where are we going? You know, why can't I solve this mystery? And what I really wanted to know is how does the Earth this big planet we stand on work to send signals back in, say, the communication industry. And the answer to that comes from understanding the history of the telegraph system. So way back in the midst of time, the wonderful Ampere in France and Voltaire in Italy and Faraday in London all discovered that a magnetic needle in a coil of wire when connected to a Voltaire battery through a wire in a circuit would wiggle when the power was turned on. And if you reverse the polarity as they do in Star Trek, the wiggle would move the other way. Aha! Maybe that could be used in a communication network. Imagine if you had a signal between two distant stations in a three position switch. The middle is, say, stop. To the left, it's forward. To the right, it's backwards. And that's what British Rail used for years. Did you know, I wonder, it's wonderful what you find out when you're doing research, that the London and North Eastern Railway, the LNER or British Rail, still used the three-point Faraday signal system, forward, stop and backwards, or yes, no and maybe, or lots of things that you could send with three points, until the 1970s on the route from London to Edinburgh. It was so reliable that they carried on using it. But yes, no one maybe or forward, stop and backwards isn't good enough. You want to be able to send messages over long distances. And that's where the telegraph came into its own in rural United States of America. So you could send a message from New York City or way to Wyoming using some kind of clicky stuff. Oh, Morse code, dash, dot, 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 dash. You press one button here, wires connect to the other station, electricity goes down the wire, makes the other station go click, and the signal comes back down another wire. And that's what they did. That was the early telegraph and it was stretched for thousands of miles over rural United States and it's really clever but something strange happened during the storms in the Midwest where ice and tornadoes or probably a tree fell and broke one of the two wires the telegraph operators noticed it still worked. Now that doesn't make any sense. There's no longer a circuit from New York all the way to Wyoming and then back. Oops, it's broken because a tree's broken the line. Then there's a gap and then the wire goes back to New York. What's going on? Well, the answer to that is wonderful. And we're beginning to understand what 
earthing really is. So that question of what earthing is and what is going on got answered by me looking at French stuff. It turns out that a French inventor wanted to have a simple communication between two towns. The towns were connected with a single wire, but the towns also had a river flowing between them. So this French inventor put copper plates one upstream and one downstream, and sent a signal through the single wire to his distant town, and it came back up the river to the other plate and made a circuit. And he went, oh, we could use rivers instead of wires. And they experimented with railway tracks instead of a return wire. And that kind of works. But in fact, they were missing the point. And the big push to discover the mystery of why a single wire from Wyoming to New York worked and you didn't need two came from the accounts department. Yes, half the price of copper. Let's just use one wire. If it works, what's the difference? And that's what happened. Even today in rural places in the world, Alaska, and Australia and some countries in Africa have single wire electricity where one wire on telegraph poles goes to a rural farm and the circuit is only completed by large ground plates and they're using the earth as the return path. So somehow our planet and our Earth, and I've yet to get to the bottom of it in my brain, works as a return path. You would think it wouldn't. You would think that dirt and rocks and grass and other stuff in your garden wouldn't transmit electricity very well. But here's a little personal mystery. So we have an electric vehicle. We have a Renault Zoe. And when we bought the Zoe, we needed a car charger. And so an electrician came and surveyed our business premises where my wife does her painting and said, it will not work. You have neutral ground bonding and you need a copper ground spike to make the Zoe work. I was going, why? And he never explained it. So in fact, we didn't go ahead with his system. It was all very expensive. We didn't need 22 kilowatt three-phase charging. We plug it in at home using our granny cable. And at home, I don't think we have a ground spike. We just have neutral earth bonding, but it seems to work. I've asked the Renault Zoe club and they say the Renault Zoe has to have a very good earth to start charging. If it suspects that there isn't a good ground or earth in the charging network, it will say charging fail. Other cars are more tolerant of poor earth, but Zoe's are very peculiar. And that's why the guy supposedly suggested we had to have the spike for our Zoe. It still doesn't explain to me why, but um, now at least I understand a little bit of what he was thinking. So that's been my journey of discovery. Now I know you out there know much more than I. You are electricians, you are physicists, you know about ground and communication and neutral bonded consumer units, and I don't. Hopefully some of you will have learned something by the way that I have learned and passed this on to you. But the question is, why am I so interested? Well, it turns out that possibly one of the reasons why the cobra mist over the horizon radar in Orford Ness associated with the Rendlesham incident didn't work is because of a ground fault. The researchers discovered that there's some force of nature in the Rendlesham Forest Woodbridge area which made cobra mist not work. And that's another mystery. So to end today, I'm really going to give you a treat. Living here in France and having access to the French internet, thanks to NordVPN, but I'm not going to push that today. I'm just going to tell you what I found by using it. I discovered the alphabet sympathetic. 
Oh boy, so long before radios, long before phones, long before telegraph, the French military did this. They cut off an inch or probably 2.5 millimeter centimeters <laughs> of skin from two soldiers and transplanted 2.5 centimeters square of skin from one soldier's wrist to the other soldier. So they had a piece of each other's skin and on the two point, let's just call it an inch, on the one inch square of skin, they tattooed the alphabet. Where am I going with this? What they did, supposedly, was when they were distantly apart, because they'd exchanged skin and so exchanged their DNA, they were on a sympathetic wavelength that when one of them with a needle poked the letter A, the other person miles away now knew that A on his wrist from his friend's skin tingled. This is true. They really did this. Now, what my research doesn't say, which is the obvious question, is did it work? Well, we don't know, but it was certainly something that they tried. And if you've ever been to Greenwich in London and looked at the great longitude mystery, one of the things to solve navigation was knowing when it was 12 o'clock midday in Greenwich. Then all your tables could tell you where you were in the world. But you needed to know when it was 12 exactly. And before the invention of the wonderful clock that didn't have a pendulum, they used dogs. Just the same as the sympathetic alphabet, they had a dog in Greenwich that they poked with a needle exactly at midday, and a dog on Royal Navy ships that barked at 12 o'clock. Did that work? Who knows? But they definitely tried it. So today I'm going to say something different at the end of the film, and that is T-T-I-O-T. <laughs> Cheers, people.